Welcome to another edition of Inside the Hatchet exclusive interview. Today I'm with Marcus Case. So Marcus, how's everything been going so far in your uh, off season? And just give us a little update on what you've been, what you've been doing about. Um, everything's going well, man. Uh, just been back home, chilling, uh, back working out. You know, just getting in this off season grind, uh, getting ready for the upcoming season. Uh, you know, just trying to take one day at a time. Yeah, yeah no doubt. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to bring you back now to your days at Ole Miss. Um, what do you think exactly helped you at Ole Miss kind of prepare you for these opportunities in the spring leagues and now being an NFL player? You know, what do you think about SEC football just in general really kind of prepared you for where you're at now? Uh, I think SEC football uh, is, you know, the if it's not number one, it's number one. You know, uh, it's the top of the class. So uh, when we're talking about NCAA football and college collegiate football, so uh, I felt like it prepared me a lot. You know, going against uh, some of the best talents. You know, week in and week out, uh, it definitely prepared me. You know, for the NFL and these other leagues that I was able to participate to participate in. Um, so, uh, you know, that, that really helped me a lot. Yeah, so, I mean, watching your tape, there's an obvious thing that stands out to me about your speed. Um, what do you think specifically kind of helped you gain that speed? And, you know, has that always been a thing that come from other sports? Where did that really come from? Um, To be honest, uh, I'm not sure. You know, I guess I can say something that I work on, you know, uh, you know, just trying to build speed, uh, you know, just basically just trying to get to the ball, uh, uh, you know, uh, just try to populate to the ball, you know, uh, try to get there as fast as I can. You know, if you're around the ball, you know, you're bound to make plays and making plays, you make money. So I like to make money and I like to make plays. So like to that ball, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I don't think it just came from just one particular thing. I did run track a little bit. Well, really, just a very little bit. So, but can't really just pinpoint it. You know, it's like it's just to the ball, though. Yeah. Yeah. Another, Another thing, thing I kind of wanted, wanted to mention real quick, quick was just, you know, your ability to make tackles out on the edge. What do you think? You need to be able to do that as a linebacker, especially in the NFL, where you're going to have to cover running backs, wide receivers, a lot of different types of positions. Uh, most definitely. Uh, I think most of these just have good eyes, and then, you know, the rest will follow. You know, obviously, you got the hips and stuff like that, but your eyes play a lot in it. You know, if your eyes are bad, then, you know, you, you that one step off, you know what I mean? can be a game changer, you know what I'm saying? So having great eyes and being able to to see things before it happens or read and react, you know, if you don't see it before it happens. So, you know, just having good eyes, good eye placements, you know, then just having the will to actually get to the ball, like I said, get, get there and make the play. Yeah, I mean, when you're looking at your career now and being on a bunch of different teams, what do you think that, you know, that requires a lot of leadership on the field, off the field. How would you describe your personal leadership in that way? Uh, I feel like I'm a great leader. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, sometimes I'm not as vocal, um, probably as some folks might want me to be, or sometimes I might be too vocal, you know, at times. But, you know, I just try to, you know, play my part and do what I'm supposed to do and lead by example, you know, uh, rather than just telling folks what to do, you know, uh, calling folks out on their mistakes and stuff like that. Like, of course, we got to check one another, you know what I'm saying? That's where, you know, you start to learn how to communicate and how to talk to people, you know what I'm saying? Like, because different people take different situations differently. So, you know what I'm saying? It's just ways to work around that, but uh, yeah. The leadership role definitely has played a good role into my life, though. You know, just being able to, you know, talk to the guys, see different perspectives on how they see things, and 
how coaches see things and how I see things and you know we we all learn from each other yeah no I think that's a great answer um another question I have here just what do you think is a part of your game that you think some people don't really know about your game you know being in a lot of different situations being some guy that's been written off at times what do you think a part of your game is that people <clears throat> underrate um I think they just really are just underestimate because they more so probably haven't heard of you know not the big name you know uh you know, I still have a lot to prove and stuff like that. So I just feel like, uh, and then also like sometimes they feel like uh, those other leagues, you know, wasn't any competition and stuff like that. So you know, they just feel like uh, you, you know, what I'm saying you did it in a smaller league. You know, can't do it here and stuff like that. So you know, it's just like a you know extra little chip though that you get. So. Um, you know, it's just playing through that 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 talk of people saying that you can't can't play in that league. You know what I'm saying? That you you wouldn't be able to make it and stuff like that. And you know, just just to kill all the doubters. Yeah, no, great answer. Now, before we get into some stuff about the Bears in your last past season, um, can you just give us a little background, your story on just what happened after Old Miss, you know, when you're undrafted and then your kind of experience all the way leading up to Chicago? Oh, most definitely. So, boys, uh, I left Old Miss. My draft class was 2018. Um, I got picked up by Cleveland. So I was up there for a couple months, uh, just going through the little OTA stuff like that, little phase one, phase two period, and then I uh, ultimately got cut uh, before training camp. So then you make it to training camp or anything. Uh, had a little break, so that was probably like three, four months, and then that's when the uh, AAF started. So I had, uh, went to Memphis, was with the Memphis Express on the uh, Coast Singletary. Um, she played well for those five, six games that we had until the league had folded up there. I did very well, you know. And then I was able to get another uh, opportunity um, with Washington, Washington Redskins. That was the Redskins then, which is the Commanders now. But, uh, same thing happened. I was up there for like two, three months. Went through OTAs. Then make the training camp. They cut me for a training camp. Uh, so same thing. Had a little break. And then the XFL came out that following year. So I was down there in Houston under the June Jones. With my boy PJ and uh, we, you know, we did our little five, six game run. Had a little good little season there. And then uh, I actually got another opportunity after that because that was the little Kobe year that that XFL had a little dissipated right there. So I got a got a little shot with Minnesota. Same thing happened. Two or three months with them, uh, OTAs, and got cut before training camp. Oh, so I was on ice. Um, nothing came up right then after that. So I was on ice for a little bit. Um, so the Spring League had came out and they was actually doing it in the winter time. Level. So it was like from a period of like October, November, something like that. And it was like a couple, like three, four games. Uh, but same thing that it was during the little COVID time. So then we only played like two or three games and that got washed away. Then come along, Canada comes along calling. So I went up to the CFL, played with uh, Saskatchewan. I uh, was up there for about like eight, nine weeks. Um, pulled my hammy. They got uh, pulled my hammy and then they sent me home. Because basically, uh, I was going to be back in time. The season had got shortened down because of COVID once again. Uh, so I was back home. Um, and then finally, the uh, USFL, they popped up, said they was coming out with something. Got, I was able to get in touch with 
with some folks there. I was able to get go you know, to the team, and then I wound up in Birmingham. So Birmingham played out, you know. We actually finished the season there in Birmingham with the USFL, won the championship. Um, and I, uh, you know, I got a little accolades, got my rings. Um, and then probably about two, three weeks after the, uh, the championship game, I had got the call from Chicago. And that was the little crazy part right then too, uh, actually. But they called me up and I went up there. They did a little workout and they assigned me. And then the rest is history that I'm here. You know? so, yeah, I mean, crazy yeah. story, I'm sure anyone would say that. Um, what do you have to say specifically about these spring leagues now? You know, you see more of them coming out. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I don't think you would be where you were without them. You know, do you think they're going to be trending up in the next few years? Um, uh, definitely. I feel like they're definitely a a, a great concept. You know, like uh, it definitely helped me. It helped a lot of people out. You know, um, like I said the X, even the XFL the first time with just a little four or five games. I know a couple of people that were able to sign to teams and you know get a tryout and stuff like that, and then. Like I said, with the USFL, just came back out, you know, got another opportunity to uh, Turpin. He's got played out to the game of to a pro bowler, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, it definitely gives guys an opportunity to showcase that they have talent or still have talent or, you know, have been overlooked and, and they know, that they can actually play the game, you know what I'm saying? So... You know, I, I definitely applaud them for for going out their way and to creating those smaller leagues, those startup leagues, you know what I'm saying, to, to help us out to, you know, really showcase the talent that's still out here that could be used. Yeah, no, great answer. Um, so then this past year, let's talk about that a little bit, being on the Bears practice squad and then, you know, being able to suit up and play in a few games. How was that experience? How much did you learn and, you know, Tell me a little bit about that locker room and just that experience for you in general. Um, definitely a great experience. Um, you know, uh, actually being in the locker room, you know, in an NFL locker room, uh, it's not kind of different from any other locker room, but, you know, just being able to, you know, chill with the guys, you know, just see how everything maneuvers, the the business mindset of it, the, you know what I'm saying, the professional mindset of it, you know, you just get a whole new glimpse of what, um, of, I guess, of what they call professionalism and stuff like that. So, you know, uh, see different guys' work ethics and things like that. And, you know, it's all still fun and games, too. You know, we always still have fun while we're doing it. You know, it's a bunch of characters in the locker room. That's, like, something I'd be telling my family, my fiance and stuff now, like, like sometimes you like these are like the biggest kids in the world, you know. They three hundred pound grown men, the the biggest kids, you know what I'm saying? Just a lot of like you just get to experience this different aspects of joys of life, you know, people coming from different areas and you know, just being able to join as one is you know, it's a beautiful thing. Yeah. Um, now, I mean, we'll bring it back to your tape here. Just watching your tape and watching your time at Ole Miss and in the past few years, you know, you're a linebacker that you want in your defense. You provide a lot of things that you need in the NFL for linebacker in general. So what do you think you do that really will allow you to excel at the NFL, just versatile-wise and being able to play fast, strong, good IQ? Uh, just like you just said, versatile. Like, you know, <laughs> fast. I can run, I can hit, I can cover, I can I can do everything. So um, really just to put me where you need me at, Coach. Put me on the field, uh, you know. Uh, if you need me to rush, I can rush. If you need me to cover, I can cover. And then stay in the box, stay in, whatever it is, you know. So I feel like just being versatile, being, being available will be my key to being able to, to stay with the Chicago and just stay in the NFL period. Yeah, great answer. Um, so now I'll kind of go with a more fun question. Being a linebacker growing up, watching football, were there any linebackers you really tried to model your game after? Oh, 
So to be honest, I didn't I didn't start playing linebacker until a little bit later. Okay. So I was, you know, the quarterback, running back thing. So I was watching, you know, Mike Vick and all that. You know what I'm saying? But when I did start, when I did, you know, get on that de- like, well, I always played defense, but when I started focusing on it, you know, it was more the Ray Lewis, Brian Erlach, P. Willie, you know, and then obviously, you know, Patrick Willis, we went to Old Miss and stuff together, so, well, not together, but Old Miss together, you know, all modern days, and so, you know, they used to kind of say that I resembled his playing style as with, you know, size and speed and stuff like that, so, you know, just try to take a little bit from everybody, you know. You know, just being on all these different teams and different experiences, I'm sure there's been some coaches that's done a lot for you throughout your football career. Are there any in particular that, you know, you want uh-huh. to thank and, you know, you appreciate for getting you to this spot? Dude, it's, it's, it's a lot. Um, to starting off from when I was Pee Wee, you say Coach Mario, Coach Richardson, to let me see. I'm sending you um, back here. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going away. Back. Uh, let me see. Um, ooh, Coach Wright got Coach Benefield. You know, then going up to like middle school. Coach May, Coach Young, to my aunt, Coach Dylan. We got to high school, Coach Hughes, Coach Bull Jones. That's my dog. I was just with him yesterday. That was my linebacker, Coach D coordinator. That's my dog. My dog. Coach Carson, shoot, even going to college, you know, just, just everybody, man. All my coaches, it was love. Coach Pito, you know, Coach Allen, shoot, Coach Harris, everybody, man. I just, Coach Luke, McGriff, Crime Dog, man, I, I thank everybody because all of them just believed in me, man. Like, if I ain't have that, that extra push for them, you know, I ain't no telling where I'd be at, so. Great way to look at it. Um, so now just one last, two last questions here. Um, pre-game meal, being from Georgia, you know, maybe how about you tell me your favorite meal and then maybe something you'd eat before a big game. My pre-game meal? Um, to be honest, I really don't have no set pre-game meal. Like the night before, I eat a lot of pasta. Like not the night before, like two days. I eat a lot of pasta, and then like the night before, I might have some wings and a little bit of pasta. But then the it depends because like so. Now we play all the time at like twelve, so it'd be breakfast. So my breakfast, you know, you can't really switch up really. No you know what I'm saying? It's eggs, bacon, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, but yeah, so like, I don't really have no real set game pregame, but I like I like a nice little omelet, you know, probably a little half a waffle. There you go. A strip of bacon, can't have too much. And some fruit, a nice little smoothie though. I do like a nice smoothie. Different. Um, so, last question here. Um, just one thing you're really excited about heading into this new season. Um, you know, it could be something you've um, been working on. You're excited to debut on the field, or you know, just something more general and specific about you and your team. I'm just ready to just like just get onto the field. Uh, just have another opportunity to to really showcase my talents. Uh, feel like I'd be getting there a little earlier. Like I'd be in be in there doing the spring OTA stuff like that so I'll be able to show them that I learned the playbook more in depth and stuff like that so hopefully going into the season they you know trust me more to throw me out there into the fire and I can make some plays for them you know so uh, I'm just excited to go out there and just show that you know I am who I say I am I can I can do this I can play this game so it's definitely yeah thanks a lot DeMarcus great time talking to you appreciate you for everything man No problem, man. I appreciate you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you.